Ooh, like the curtain opening. We'll see how that looks uh, when I go to edit it. Nice, that's dramatic. Yeah, thank you for doing this, Jeremy Scott Olson. We're going to be talking about recording voice actors, recording ADR. Uh, you have an amazing resume. Uh, you are the founder of uh, Bad Self Media and their subsidiary record labels, Bad Self and Audion Song. In the last five years, your work has included VO and ADR mixing slash editing slash supervising and sound editing across film, television, video games, whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you're based out of Burbank. Your list of TV credits is far too long. Some ones you might recognize are Family Guy, American Dad, Ted, The Orville, You, Riverdale, Pretty Little Liars, Minx, Goosebumps, and a whole bunch more. Uh, and so I'm very happy to be able to bottle your expertise on this. Um, and this kind of came about because I was I messaged you over Discord and I was just kind of looking for advice on people who want to go into directing voice actors. Like if they're working on a game that has narrative and dialogue and stuff, the role of directing might fall onto them. Uh, so yeah, and I, you you were like, well, here's a bullet point, and it was like, <laughs> it was like very thorough, uh, really cool stuff in there. And I was like, why don't we why don't we just get on a stream and talk about it, and then. Uh, go from there so um yeah so thank you for doing this and i'm glad you suggested that yeah, yeah. uh so i mean take and it away dear thank you so much for for thanks for orchestrating this man making it happen of course uh, all right so i'm going to try to be really light and efficient with this it's a long list and a lot of it is things i could talk about each one for a long time uh i'd like to invite people to uh hit me up for more information if they would like if um always up for the the discussion too like oh i've seen it in this way or i do it this way and that's different than what you subscribe yeah there's no one right way so um i'm going to preface this all by saying advice number one uh, hire a voice director <laughs> um you don't always get to there's plenty of people who maybe um can absolutely do this you don't have to it's just like anything else in our field you don't have to have the title of voice director to be competent at voice directing skills right yeah um, just the way that uh, somebody calls themselves a mixer can still be an editor. Somebody who works in post can still work on music. On and on and on. There's just there's the, the, those are imaginary boundaries. There are real skill sets, but there's so much overlap with those skill sets in in many cases. Um, so, like in me personally, I would be comfortable voice directing a. Um, a smaller project by myself. I'm totally fine with that. I mean, like TV, you've worked a lot, like I would say mostly in TV, right? Like you've done a lot of stuff, but like has the bulk of it been in a setting where it, there is like a, an engineer, a director, a, you know, a wrangler, I don't know, yeah. for small, like have you been in a lot of smaller projects where you are kind of in the role of directing voice actors? That's interesting. Um, typically, I've not been anything that small where I'm doing that for VO uh, because for anything of any size with VO, it's there just is either a voice director yeah. or it's the producer or right. um, sometimes it's writers or a couple of other people, but it's basically basically one of those folks or sometimes a combination, yeah. um, a sort of collaborative effort. Um, in in film, it's generally going to be the director because at that point you're probably talking about a feature animated mm -hmm. film, so that's going to be your director. They're not going to leave that to anybody else. Um, in TV, your executive producer is your creative lead, so that's basically their their, their job. Yeah. And um, in games, it, it, that's where you sometimes get more, I think, of a voice director, or you might have the, the you'd still have that producer or that um, kind of dialogue, not dialogue lead, but it would be like a um, like a narrative person would be yeah. in the room possibly. Um, there's sometimes again several people, but then you're going to still have that voice director. Um, and it's not even necessarily so, about, like, anyways, the title, but like it's more like you're. It's just about who understands like the character that this person is, and that right. might be a different somebody is different thing. Somebody is always voice directing, whether or not they are yeah. a professional full time voice director. Sure, or not, yeah, right. It, so, um, yeah, in all those animation settings, I'm generally not the one directing, though. Depending on if somebody's experienced or not, and and if they are open to the feedback, I can give feedback. I've, I've coached very new directors before um, when, like for say, a uh, experienced executive producer invites a inexperienced uh, writer into the booth to be with them. Sometimes I'll see if they want a little primary beforehand. Hey, do you want to talk about this for a sec, you know, before you, before we go down the hall, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But, um, but yeah, typically, you know, as an engineer, it's just observing, which is where a lot of this knowledge comes from 
16 years of observing yeah. dozens of different people exactly, do it yeah. in many different ways with many different levels of success. And then um, directing some actors myself uh, as an ADR supervisor, because in TV, quite often that is actually who's doing it. Somebody on the sound team, believe it or not. It's not the director usually doesn't come. The, the executive producer doesn't usually come. It's usually the. But uh, then it's I mean, at that point, you're, the ADR thing is a little different than like like directing a performance of lines like you already have the lines. You're just like you're an expert more in how are we getting your like this cleaner version spliced in nicely. So that's where it would be less of like, that's where it would make sense to me to be an ADR for it to be an ADR person. ADR can be anything from purely technical reasons to actually purely artistic, purely, purely creative. Ah, Okay. All right. Um, There are times where the like, you know, Oh wow. We, we, we we just really need a little more. um, We need this line to sound sad. Or we realize in the moment that wasn't, you know, the way the story was headed in this. Oh, okay. Scene, yeah. I'm not going to reshoot the whole scene. We just want this little, like a tinge of sadness in your voice. Can you say that? Yeah. And we think that we think that this delivery supports that, you know, in a sense, at sense, at least ADR, all of that sort of ADR is a hack. You kind of guess there's rarely going to be a way that's going to come out better <laughs> because you crammed a different performance into the mouth of somebody who you can see their face. Right. Right. But right. Yeah. If you do it really well, if you do it really well, you can at least make it as good. I think, um, and some actors are just so good at ADR and, uh, between that and good editor and good mixing, you can end up really glad you did it still that, uh, like, yeah, this does support the story better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe this doesn't, that is, maybe it's still not Oscar winning, but like, this is still better for the big picture. This is better for the story. And then there's technical reasons and all sorts of combinations of things that are sometimes a little bit of both. So, um, it's a real smorgasbord actually in there of, um, reasons and what you need to sort of how you interact with an actor um get them to that place which at the yeah. same time then still has to match and fit into what was existing now that same with with vo uh and vo you actually don't have picture as a reference so in that sense that can be harder yeah you have to have either somebody with a memory or a lot of cooperation or reference materials to play back yeah um adr it's built in you have video they'll remember the day they shot it and the, and the scenes and the you know the changes that they made the direction that the director gave that a lot of that will come back to an actor and, um, well so we should maybe go to the prep category so yeah, preparation. So um, philosophy is a great background for anything. Um, and if you don't have one yet and you don't know how to form one, cool, a lot of that comes with experience. But uh, you can draw on your experiences with any other creative interaction and and uh, creative activities that you do and say, like what that. am I trying to achieve? What is the focus here? As with everything, uh, it's all about story and character. Any, anything with stories and characters is all about the story and the character. Mm-hmm. And dialogue is a representation of that. So given those things, you can probably start to think what's important, right? Certain clarity and that and emotional content and uh, being true to what the character is and, and what they would say and mm-hmm. how the story is progressing. And that means you have to know those things. Um, um, and one of a great, so a couple of things in here are pieces of advice I got from a, 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 another, uh, an actual voice director who does more of this in that context. Mm-hmm. And uh, his name is James Scullion. Uh, and one of his great comments I just kind of mentally noted and because I wanted to include here was um, make each project your new favorite thing. Mm, nice. uh, find the things to love about this project and then communicate them to people too. And like, you know, don't, don't keep it inside. Hold on, you know, don't hold on to it. You should share that. Like sometimes people need that. They may feel down about their own project. They may mm. be skeptical about whether you're on board. They, they're just maybe kind of a feeling in the booth. And that's one way, really way to do it is like, you find the things you can genuinely get attached to about it at all and, and start with that. And, uh, cause really ultimately everything should be a potential Oscar winner in your mind. You know, yeah, you're, you're not, Absolutely. you don't ever want to work with less than that in mind. Yeah, you want to say, don't, all right, yeah. well, let's, let's get this, let's bet this piece of crap out of the way. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. That's not how, not how you make good things. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Um, script. So that means of course that knowing your script is, is important. And, uh, a lot of these things I'm going to touch on, there are other people that do this in the big full system, but it's important to know that there is somebody doing it. So, for example, hopefully somebody's preparing a script, and typically you're going to have a different script for the actor than you'll have for the producer. The producer might have specific notes and things about what's actually needed, um, and they're going to use that to also take notes and stuff on their version. The actor it just needs the simplest version with the, the lines and the and the headers, Mm-hmm. the character headers and this and the, the stage direction 
And ideally, for most things, there's some form of lining, at least that's how I know it is lining, where you're actually putting line numbers by of some sort by everything. So it's very easy for a director to say, page three, line 17. Right. As opposed to, you know, the page that starts with such and such, the, the line about halfway yeah. down, <laughs> Yeah. you don't want to avoid yeah. that. So clarity, copies for everybody, extra copies, mm -hmm. and definitely different copies unless there's literally nothing that needs to be different. Um, you know, you don't want anything, you don't want the actor having to worry about notes that, that, that shouldn't, they shouldn't, you want to express to them, you don't want them to interpreting things off a page or multiple sources, any of that stuff. It's just, here's the script, a good old fashioned script, the thing you know and love, that's what actors work with all the time, right? Nothing fancy is a script, and then now I'm going to lead you. I'm a director, and that's what again actors. Yeah. No. That, well, and, and that's so that's a good a nice rule of thumb with like uh, music prep too, like arranging, like handing an alto sax player. He, he doesn't need every little bit of information. He just needs what he needs, you know. So, yeah. Yeah. How? <laughs> what does a pro look at and get instant information from without anything that's uh, extra and confusing yeah. and gets in the way? Right. Yeah. Um, session materials and distribution, just make sure somebody's getting these things out in advance to everybody. Hopefully you're on a production that isn't going to be turning out last second things, but obviously that happens all the time. I've had mm -hmm. that happen, I'm sure, dozens or hundreds of times that, you know, you're in the booth and something new comes in right then, or mm -hmm. it's literally in progress and you're like, oh, hey, we're sending something, hold on. So you roll with the punches, but just make sure again, you, you as a, every, every person in that room should know the pipeline. Where does their script, where's their information coming from? Mm -hmm. If there's a schedule change, where does that come from? If there's a script change, where does that come from? Um, if the actor needs something, who can go get it? Is there a PA or a runner or uh, somebody else who can get it? Or is it going to be you or is mm -hmm. the engineer going to be somebody needs, you know? Um, and of course, yeah, you can over prepare, but at the same time, if you have no idea the answers of any of these questions, it doesn't always look great on right. you. Know, yeah. For you to have none of, none of the answers. And it isn't exactly always comforting for an actor. Yeah. And that is, again, how you, you can easily like book, bring the level of a session down by, by just communicating, I'm not a pro, I'm not ready, I don't care. Well, and it's so, like, uh, better to over prepare than under. Yeah. It's like the, just having the stuff that you can control under your, under your fingers and then everything else. Right. You just got to roll with. It's just the prep. Right. Yeah. Prep is important. And it's valuable, valuable to know what kind of situation you're in. If you're in a very professional situation, it'll probably be pretty obvious or just one question for the right person. They'll say, oh, well, so-and-so does this, so-and-so does this, and so-and-so does this. You don't have to worry about any of that, but we got it. Uh, if you need this, ask so-and-so. Yeah. It'll be that. If if nobody can tell you that, you might be in trouble and yeah. you might want to be really be careful that you know yeah. who is doing each role. And and even though script preparation isn't your job, you might want to come a little extra prepared. Yeah. Even though, you know, uh, distributing materials isn't your job, you might want to kind of check on it and say, oh, hey, I didn't get this yet. Is it coming? Yeah. Hey, did someone so get a copy? I'm sure they're going to need it. Did somebody send this to the actor? You know, ask the questions if you're not sure. Yeah. But I've, and then, of course, on the other end, pros, that's their job. Don't bug them. If they don't do it, it's on them. It, right. Every now and then people <laughs> right. that make mistakes, but it'll get it'll get done. Yeah. Um, so reference materials. Um, there's another thing to prepare. It's just it varies. Sometimes it's going to be um, nothing. You know, there's literally it's just an original record and it's a character they already know. So or a new character and there's nothing to show them or anything. But the, often with new characters, um, like voice actors and, and game actors like to see a drawing or a little animation if that's done or something. Here's what does my character look like. Sometimes there'll be the, um, yeah. is it called a, a layout? Uh, where they have like height comparisons and different poses of oh, okay, uh, different yeah. characters and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know um, the name of it, things but... like that can go a long ways to, to where they'll go right to a place. A, a good voice actor will go right to a place, whereas you had to describe and fiddle with it. They'll just yeah. be like, this character looks like this and they'll do yeah. that sound you know and that's an amazing place to start so but also it can be previous lines that you want read differently or if you're changing half a line have that line ready so they can hear the how they did the other half if you're like mm. we really love this first half we just yeah. want to change the second half they can match it which means if the edit works you can only use the second half but if the edit doesn't work you still have a first half that hopefully you like yeah right yeah. um all sorts of things like this. Uh, reference if there's if there is finished picture already, then cool. Play them a scene if it's um, um, there's. I've seen references for um, like how a character moves as a way to describe the person. Like they had storyboarded a dance 
uh, and actually had professional dancers shoot this as well. So they choreographed it so it could be animated. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is all in animation this because this helped. Yeah. Yeah, in animation, yes. and this helped define the character the way he was sort of wispy and wobbly and stumbly and interesting. Like they wanted that to translate to this voice that they yeah. hadn't yet found. The right. cat. So, um, reference materials. Priorities. This next one is so priorities and division of labor. Uh, in different situations, different people are responsible for different things, and sometimes it's even named different things. If you are uh, in live TV, you have an audio coordinator. I mean, sorry, a script coordinator. Mm-hmm. As your person um, who's dealing with continuity, making sure things line up right. in different places, the script that, um, and and that can be visually too. Are they wearing the same hat, or their hair is done the same way, or whatever? But also yeah. making sure parts of the script agree when they shoot on different days and all that. Making sure right. everything gets shot and taking notes about what's shot. Say so that in in my experience is generally called an audio coordinator. Mm-hmm. Um, some people still also seem to call it a script coordinator, but okay. either way, you need somebody in charge of the script, right, and taking those notes and all that. Sometimes the engineer is supposed to take the notes. Sometimes the producer likes to take the notes themselves. Um, who's directing? Like I said, in TV, it might be the showrunner is the executive producer. He might have some writers with him. In game audio, it could be a, a producer. It could be a narrative lead. Uh, it could be a vo- there should be a voice director in there too. And in that, which case, the voice director is actually doing the directing, mm-hmm. and then privately, sort of the, the, everybody else talk to them and give them their ideas. So right. lots of different workflows that is really. Helpful to know going in how that labor is divided. Um, and of course, then also priorities, If you're, like, especially if you have limited time, which is lots of sessions. <laughs> you can have yeah. some limitation that uh, maybe seems a little unreasonable when you start. Uh, it's really good to have priorities laid out and say, oh, if we don't get through all this today, what do we do? Um, you know, things like that. Uh, yeah. I, again, I, I'm trying to stop myself always from going no, into no, way too much detail. It's but. so hard. I, it's, don't worry. You're, do, it's, you're doing awesome. It's, it's all good. I see how Thank much you. we have to right. get through. Right, so right. it's like we're, we're so, okay. <laughs> uh, and one, well, one more thing, and this is mostly for the for the inexperienced folks. Is uh, even though you might feel intimidated or not like the professional doing this, if you end up having to book direct voice directors and you're getting paid for a job, congratulations, you're professionally directing voice actors. Yeah. And so, always good to still remember some basic things um, that, for me, would be really hard to just wrap my mind around if if I. I just put them in my head once and try to walk into the booth and do them. I don't think these would come naturally. Mm-hmm. For some people, they might. Uh, but I, I would say these are fall under prep for me because for some people, this like me, this might take some learning and some practice. And uh, that's sort of decorum, your, your professionalism. Like it, it's very easy to get into a position that you're not familiar with mm-hmm. and fall away from from professionalism. Right? Can- um, remember, you, not, you have a job to do. Just do the job, and yeah. and you have people around you to support you. Hopefully, all that sort of thing. Like so, that sort of level of confidence, expectations for the actors, knowing that no matter what you think of your level of experience with this or involvement with this or anything, if it's your job to do it, your expectations for the actors should be as high as their own expectations for themselves. And trust me, if you're doing anything professionally, those actors mostly expect a lot of themselves. Anybody that's who doesn't probably doesn't last very long. That's so interesting because it's so like you what need if, to also expect a lot of them. That's professionally what you're supposed to do is expect yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, because it's yeah. like if you have like do it. That's, you have like amazing. this person that's just super like maybe like thirty years your senior in the industry or something, and you're like, <laughs> I don't know, like you have Josh Brolin see it all the time. to do ADR on Dune. And I see it all like, the time with the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. like. I yeah, better people. I better make sure he's being as Josh Brolin as he can be, you know? Like how do you do that? No, how do you develop that skill? Right. <laughs> like being confident yeah. with that, I guess just having experience, you know, but yeah. Absolutely. And it's see balancing that with um vibes, much like in yeah. in music, I think any real-time creative production is about vibe, dance, theater, you know. And um having a mindset and a mentality and a bag of tricks to make it comfortable, you know, whether that's busting into your dad jokes or you, you just knowing yourself, like, what are you good at conversationally and sort of comfort building wise, you know, icebreaker wise, all that sort of stuff. Just kind of having those things that they're ready because you're probably meeting somebody new. If this is your first time you meet somebody new. You might be doing something new. And um, it's good to just remember that they're human. And as long as they feel good, they'll do a better job. You yeah. Know? Um, the more, 
we, we place lots of challenges on actors as it is, so we don't need to, to, to place a extra stress and, and a discomfort that isn't part of the role already, you know, in the job. Yeah. Uh, and yes, yes. And is a big one. Um, comedy, that's a comedy, um, improv, yeah, like comedy, an improv comedy, primary yeah. tenet is yes. And what if you don't in general, the whole entire flow of the day is not about no instead, or that won't work. It really should be. Yes. Good idea. Maybe let's try it. Yeah. And how about this? Yeah. And that's, that's not Add just for directing it. actors. Additive. That's kind of been related to everybody, but it really helps create that vibe, which is then is really primarily about the actor. Cause again, that's how right. they uh, respond the best being the more it's our brains. We shut down when we hear, no, that don't work. No, that doesn't work. No, that doesn't work. So everything needs to be about yes. And yes. And yes. And uh, that's a big one to get in your head before you are, uh, you're, uh, you know, actually trying to do it yeah um on process so we're this is talking about the um flow of the session kind of um how things get done in, in a little more of a cold hard numerical way the broad view of this uh actor arrives there's always some pleasantries most people aren't going to have them sign contracts beforehand i don't think that's i don't know if that's technically allowed i don't i don't know the legalities of all the contract stuff after all that time i've managed to avoid <laughs> having to know too much about the legal sure. the legal stuff sure thank goodness yeah but um let's say lucky but so but making sure contracts are out and ready um it's really i think it's really nice uh, i've known some really successful people who are really great at when an actor comes in kind of just always knowing something that happened recently in their lives um that might be okay to talk about you know like if something's doing really well and of course avoid anything that's that's not okay oh you just got divorced how's that going like <laughs> The ob- obvious example, but you know, that th- it would be very easy to talk about something that is is kind of a, a stick of dynamite. So, right. um, if you have something you like, it doesn't even require a response, just a compliment. Like, oh man, I saw your your last show, such and such, is just doing amazing, and I saw it, and I loved it. Or, oh, my wife and I are big big, big fans, and just so happy to have you in here, man. You know, right? Um, those sort of things can be really cool. Not fanboying out, of course. Staying professional always, yeah. no matter who it is. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's somebody's going to lead them into the booth and set them up. That's probably and hopefully the engineer. That can be a good moment, or sometimes before they get in the booth, it can be a good moment to have that initial discussion. So somewhere in there's going to be an initial discussion with whoever's directing. Some mm-hmm. people will just wait until they're set up in the booth, and it depends if it's a quick day, lots of in and out. Then yeah, they're people probably just sitting in the recording booth in the control room, just waiting until they're set up. And so then you have that initial discussion, which is okay. Is this a new character? Well, we have to know about it. We have to find it. Uh, is it, if it's not, do they remember it? And what's new about this particular moment? Why are we doing this, this particular script? Was there a problem? Is there the things that, that they need done differently? Yeah. Is this just adding on some things that they change some jokes, all that stuff could really ha- helpful. Otherwise you have to remember a lot of the time actors are sent just a few pages of a script for privacy reasons. They're like, we're not going to send out full scripts to literally, uh, yeah. Time, yeah. you know, for every show. Uh, yeah. So often they get almost no information and you really need to t- set the scene for them. So that could be a voice director for sure. Could be also be a producer or exactly an EP on TV. Lots of different roles, but whoever's kind of creatively leading that uh, can fill them in. And then you generally you have the getting into it. Um, the initial direction is what I would say is what that's called. The initial direction of being who is your character again, new or or established. Like who who is this character? What, who are they? What are they feeling in this moment? What is happening in this scene? Just action wise. Um, how do they? How are they relating to the characters around them? Um, what's the level of you know intensity and urgency about all this? The things that they may not get from all the words on the on the on the script, and that a perfect script would always fill them in. You know, but I feel like that's pretty right. much a mythical thing. There's no <laughs> yeah. perfect script. Every everything needs elaboration, and you know, if you have a vision for that, you need to express it. Yeah. Um, it's great to do that, but it's also great to do that in a way that doesn't overwhelm them with too much information. You definitely want to leave them room to play. Yeah. So sometimes Trust you them. can just do us one simple. Some people will just say a simple thing. You know, to me, this is uh, this is Danny DeVito. In a, this is I'm going to say something really stupid right now, but this is Danny DeVito in a banana suit drunk at a party, <laughs> and see what that gets people. They're like, okay, 
cool. So it's probably got an accent and a certain sort of voice and a certain yeah. sort of delivery and obviously a little like slurring with speech and go. And so <laughs> maybe that's all you need to get the person to the exact right place. Right. But also specific references can be very dangerous, <laughs> especially if you deal with somebody, some voice actors are very much impressionist and they'll be like, oh, and then Danny DeVito pops out. Yeah, and like, yeah. Oh, I didn't really mean literally. Yeah, like, interesting. So specific yeah. works for some people, especially for comedy and impressions. Specific is really good. Um, comedy is really tough because I generally read not line reading, never line giving an actor, here's how I want you to read it. But in comedy, sometimes the joke is written such that a certain delivery is what has to happen. Right. Like this joke is based on this delivery. This joke is about right. how they say this word. We yeah. thought this was hilarious and we need you to say that that hilarious way. So comedy is its own very special little thing. Drama, yeah. no no line reads. Why would you line read a, somebody in drama? Why, what do you think the way you can say it is the way it is better than the way the actor can say it when it comes right. just to being an actor and have expressing a feeling. That's what it is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see initial direction, actor delivery, uh, most sessions of most VO. Once you get going, you just want to do three in a row of everything. Um, it's the right number for most people. Most of the time that you get, Three is a, is a magical number with variety. Like I've heard a lot of voice actors who would just, you can hear what they're doing is here's my favorite. And then here's one that's a little, say, higher pitched and faster and a little more intense. And here's one that's a little lower or more laid back. And that's kind of their system. They'll to get three different takes every time. Mm -hmm. Some people, I don't feel like I even hear them having a system because it's just three different takes. And they can just kind of pop out three every time. So there's not really a rhyme or reason. But having one, two, three is great for an actor to get in at least a tiny bit, a little bit of a rhythm. Mm -hmm. And it's great, I think, for a director to shut up for a bit and listen and hear a variety of things, right? Right. Um, just hearing one in Sample isolation it. would be rough. And the um, main caveats I'd say are that I've, I've heard definitely and, and edited some game VO sessions because there's so many lines. Yeah. Sometimes hundreds of thousands of lines in a game. <laughs> Peter Dinklage They will sometimes do one it. or two takes. I've I've heard one and two takes at a time with a with a major actor, major character, and they know it really well, and they're just plowing through short lines. It'll just be one line, one take or two takes. Yeah, be like one take. Uh, in fact, I heard one where it seemed like they had clearly agreed one take unless I ask for another. So every now and then you hear the one take, and then the <laughs> yeah. voice director would quickly chime in. Hey, well, I got one more. Um, you know, just a little more urgent and angry. Yeah, and then he'd nail it the next take. Great, thanks. Oh, one one other caveat aside from the speed pressure mm -hmm. thing, um, would be loud, really loud lines. Um, when you do a lot of screaming and grunting, uh, that's a then great you have thing to touch two on, or yeah. even one at a time. Yeah, and well, and I think I have some more about that later. Uh, okay, I do. I have more about that later. Because I um, almost I have pretty much no uh, idea how to right. do that, <laughs> other than like go back here and yell into some shirts. But yeah. <laughs> yeah right yeah all good um so um and, and then you're basically progressing through the script it's your prerogative as a as a voice director to go in whatever order you think is best so for example if a lot of the script is flashbacks you think it might be better to actually do a chronological order because that makes more sense to an actor doing it cool though that might help them actually because what maybe what matters in this case is actually just them kind of growing up over time or learning mm. through these flashbacks. They learn more and more and become more and more distressed about something, right? Interesting, yeah. So that might make a lot more sense. Rather than saying, okay, now you know less, so you're less distressed, right? Oh, and now you're really distressed. This is right near the end. Oh, yeah. this is in the beginning when you know nothing. Right. So there are times when it helps to go out of sequence. But in most cases, you're just going to go in sequence. Yeah. And, um, uh, another thing I'd say is you want to make sure you plan in breaks. Um it's it's very nice for an actor to have a break every now and then. Um, I don't have a general recommendation. I, I don't know what SAG requires, actually, because I've never had to worry about that one myself. Um, and I it, I feel like at most, the longest we go without breaks is about two hours, I think, on any session I've been on. At some point, then somebody just say, oh, hey, you can use the restroom, or hey, everybody want to take a break by. for you know, five or ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it can. If, yeah, if, especially if it's going really well. <laughs> it yeah. can really fly by. Yeah. Um, so, um, but you know, at that point, that's just a lot of, that's a lot for a voice to then keep going for another couple hours. So, mm -hmm. uh, in the brain, everybody reset a little bit. Um, let's see what else recording, um, recording. There's just kind of two main ways to do it. And one would be to start recording and never stop. 
in which case you need to have some system for marking and uh, cutting that up later yeah. and, and marking it later, right? Um, otherwise, you, otherwise, you're hitting a literally one long file with no help to somebody. Yeah. So at some point, um, in, in, you know, some game audio, like they may freelance out or their dialogue department may get that one long file and their script, and that is their job, is to go through and just find those things wherever they are and, and cut them, and hopefully the notes are really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the other way, which is the way I work most of the time, but not, not exclusively, is uh, is is to make it take stop and you know break takes every basically kind of every time the director talks mm-hmm. uh, could be a new take, and then whoever is whoever's noting takes has a clear way to say, oh well, this is take two. I can see it right there on the screen, or you could call it out and slate it. Uh, so this is take two A B C three A B C. So otherwise, it's just a long string of A B A A B C D A B C D. And in those note-taking systems, um, it's good to also have a, a system for noting broken takes where you stop in the middle. Some systems you might have, like you have your script, and maybe somebody draws a line through like how far they got each time. So here's an A, and then stop there. B got all the way through. C, yeah. the restart it there. D, oh, okay, oops, stopped yeah. really early. E. It's very handy to have those, because otherwise if you just have A, B, C, D, E, people on the other end editing this, they can look at this and say, uh, I don't see five full takes. So what did they call A? What did they call B? Right. So knowing that A stopped here, B went all the way through, C, then it lines up and you can you get, you know. So you gotcha. want to try and represent enough information, but in a clear enough, simple enough way that people on the other end editing this can still cut quickly and make the right decision, choose the right takes. Um, that, again, voice director, probably not your job, but if you're a one-man show at the moment or there's only two of you, like it's the engineer and you, it's, well, that's and that's out. perfect segue into what I was going to say because, like, what what I'm what you're revealing from this, like, versus like maybe like a small indie game studio with a, either just one audio person or a small team of audio people. There's probably going to be like a like a audio manager or supervisor or something that's kind of like doing all these things that you're talking about, and it's all almost like if you're a one man show. Uh, it's almost kind of easier to, to think about all this stuff. Like, well, I'll just, cause I, it's just at the back of my head. So I just have to go to the back of my head and grab that information and bring it over. Whereas like you're handing it off to an editor and that person's handing it off to a mixer. And there's this big chain of like, you have to be a hive mind to have, to be a part of this like large production. A lot of systems. Yeah. A lot of yeah. systems, a lot of infrastructure. Yeah. You lose some efficiency each time you add those people, but you obviously gain total capability, yeah. which is why devices do it. Yeah. So yeah. End of the process part here. Um, mm. Private discussions and talk back. Uh, just make sure you have a reliable talk back system and that everybody knows how to use it. Okay. That's all. I mean, you know, um, you want to make sure you're in a situation that either people are very confident with the talk back so that they can say what's actually on their mind to you. And, and I realize they can probably be seen. So they control their faces as well and all that and them pointing and yelling when they're, yelling. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully people know to control themselves either way, but, right. but like, can they absolutely trust that talk back? So moving on to getting a session started, like the actual that day there at that moment, um, I would always start, Anybody walking into that room, but especially anyone in any position of power, which includes a voice director to some extent, depends on the relationships, but um, you are kind of running the session at that point, even if you're not the boss uh, showing up. I think it's a really great way to start with some gratitude mm-hmm. for everybody else being there and everybody else doing their job, kind of starting off with the expectation, like, you're all pros, and I'm really glad to be working with all nice. professionals, yeah. and this is, I'm really glad to be doing this here, yeah. that acknowledgement, you know. I think all that sort of stuff can just be a great way to start a day. Um, Keeps you working too. Uh, that's before an actor. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it also helps your own mindset. Like it would be very easy to just be down on all mm-hmm. the things that are difficult or disappointing about it, you know, or what but you've you already prepped but for all that. So you're difficult, good. Disappointing, <laughs> you, right. There's yeah. difficult, disappointing things about everything. What's, what's awesome about this? Like yeah. you're getting paid to do this. If you love yeah. doing it, it's, this is amazing. Find the yeah. amazing things, right? Yeah. And start your day with that, and then kind of help everybody else start their day with that too. Nice, for sure. Um, Love that. Actors greeting the actors and setting up again. Remember, actors. Uh, obviously, I, sh- I don't want to have to say it, but I, just in case anybody's watching, whatever has it in their their head or doesn't have it in their head thoroughly yet, go fanboying, fangirling, right? 
you are a professional, and when actors show up there, they do not expect people asking for their autograph. They do not expect people to be, um, you know, interrogating them about behind the scenes stuff or mm -hmm. asking what the favorite episode is or <laughs> listening to them or telling them all the things that they that you know they did this last week that were on TMZ and you know, no, 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 no. they're a professional. If they want to chat, they'll chat. Yeah. Um, and you remember too, there's sort of that power relationship in a sense. You hired them, so they can feel pretty obligated to chat with the boss. Right. And there's probably already there's probably people there more powerful in that hierarchy than you, like an executive mm -hmm. producer or a, a narrative lead or something on a game. That they're probably the ones who actually do the small talk and the chit chat. If you get to be in on that, maybe it's because you're really familiar with everybody and, you, and you're, they trust you. But yeah. generally speaking. Keep it to professional and keep it to knowing your relationship with that particular actor mm. and the people around you. Even even if you know that actor well, you got to remember everybody else may not realize that and understand that relationship. So right. all of that matters. Uh, but otherwise, just helping an actor feel um, comfortable and welcome and making sure they know where there's water or tea or things for their voices. And, you know, if, if there's a, air conditioning is a little weird today, hey, if the air conditioning is bugging you, just let us know. We can, we can you know, we send somebody to fix that for you. Things that let them know um, we're watching out for you, and uh, we've got you. We know you're here to do a really kind of intense, difficult job. A lot mm. of the time, it's pretty intense, pretty difficult. Yeah. So you know, we got you. We'll take care of you. We don't want you to have to worry about anything, but just but the acting because you're awesome. Yeah. So um, and and setting them up, kind of the same thing. It's just all all business, and keeping sort of their comfort in mind, and keeping you have to balance. I can get a great recording uh, with. Um, they're comfortable. They can see the screen if they need to. They're they can wave their arms around if they need to, mm. or um, or or there's somebody you're comfortable telling them not to wave their arms around, right? Yeah. Um, no, noisy clothes need to come off, but also are they wearing enough clothes to take? Did they think about that? Um, you might have to get creative with that. With put a blanket around them or mm. a jacket, or yeah, you know, see if they'll wear a jacket or something. Mic them a little differently. Mm. Um, one important thing with ADR, if this is ADR and not, not voiceover, there's the always a lav, or there should be a lav and a boom, right? Because you're mimicking how things were typically recorded on the set, which is almost always with a lav on the actor and then okay. a, yeah. a boom microphone. Yeah, That lav can be any of a number of different kinds and hidden in lots of different places, but we can only worry about so much, and we don't want to like hide it under rustly clothes just to replicate the bad sound we're trying to replace. So yeah, generally, you can yeah. put that somewhere right around here. Yeah. And the thing is, depending on the clothes, even even if it's somebody on, um, so if it's somebody that is, is, I don't know how to say this in the right terms. So if you're a straight man, clipping that onto a, onto a woman, <laughs> be especially careful, but also it might be weird to be clipping it on a dude too. It depends. And right. It's, you're in someone's personal part, space. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For the most part, yeah. I'm just asking first these days. I'm just like, hey, you want to clip this on yourself or do you want me to do it? Yeah. Be, oh, okay, got it. And then you just kind of make sure you're watching to see you can yeah. you still sure. get what you need. That's, again, the balance of com that comfort with, like, I still need to get the results. Yeah. You know, so yeah. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting mental gymnastics to be always pursuing both. Pursue, like, the least resistance, nice, smooth, cool, easy day for everybody, mm -hmm. but also work really hard to get everything just right and perfect, yeah. right? Yeah. It's, it's both. Um, let's see. Actor readiness and questions. Um, so there's that introduction, then, that, that initial direction, and um, it's, I think, really good to have everybody sort of paying attention to what they may or may not know coming into this and what they really need to know. Um, even for returning characters, again, like I said, the, that new situation, a new scene, a new um, a change in the script since last time they were in, it can lead to the sort of confusion. They can be going down the path, wrong path, sometimes a long time. I've been in situations where I was the one, as an engineer, I turned around in the booth and said, I think, um, I think they don't realize that such and such and such happened. And the, you know, you, you see the the executive the producer's eyes light up, and they're like, "Oh!" And they'll say it, and they're like, "Oh no, I had no idea. That changes everything." It's like, "Oh well, we just did five lines yeah. without not even realizing that." Yeah. So, um, in terms of that readiness and and answering their questions, like listening to their questions, trying to listen to the questions the actor asks from their 
of perspective the best you can. Mm. Um, it's they're asking it because probably because they really don't know much. In many cases, they don't know anything, right? Mm -hmm. They may get this little packet of two pages of script sometimes. Yeah. And they literally don't know anything. So try to keep that in mind because I feel like sometimes there's such a rush and we just answer things as if it was somebody who knew all that we know. And yeah. we were working on this thing, you know, it was maybe it was full time for some people. Yeah. So um, that's really the biggest thing in setting up those actors uh, for, for really being ready to start a, a session. You yeah. Know? Um, it's and it's so much yeah. like there's so it makes me appreciate just everybody doing all of it. It's and and actors most of all because it's like like you were saying like it's like maybe it's a flashback. Maybe at this point you don't know this and like this web of possibilities that you have to consider and like who's in charge of that and like you know yeah it's just so much to so much to line up to get like the exact performance you want you know and so like i I liked what you said about like the like striking a balance between like comfort and let's get the best thing because like that's would take a a entire career to perfect you know or even not even perfect but just to get close you know before you really getting going you want to make sure you um that all the people around you are actually ready there's nothing like just starting to plow ahead in session people yeah. who are already flustered being like i'm not ready yet i've seen a lot of boiling over in those moments oh yeah that you, maybe you didn't realize your audio coordinator is still getting late scripts from writers uh, okay and hasn't even sorted them out because they're in a messy pile on our desk that a pa just handed her right so that sort of awareness of actually just take a deep breath and look around in the room and say, uh, all these other people who need to be here is that, is everybody ready? We need a yeah. moment, you know, and exercise actors, empathy. <laughs> actors, <laughs> actors probably spend a half or more of their lives waiting, professionally waiting. You, you wait on all the time uh, yeah. on a set or in a booth. So it's much better to say, Oh, Hey, would you mind, uh, bear with us for a sec. We just got to get, a, we got a new script just came in. We'll get to you in a sec and then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, much better just to keep your cool. Mm -hmm. You know, let people do their jobs again, especially if they're professionals, let them be professional. Mm -hmm. If you actually know there's a problem, hopefully you can kind of foresee that and help and then help maybe deal with the problem. But you have to realize, of course, once you're in the session, that's not the place to, to fend off most problems. That's the, that's when you're going to get the problem and you just yeah. have to make the best of it. And then yeah. that part of that is that that vibe, that, that yes and like, yes, yeah. uh, hey, oh, just a few more minutes. All good. Getting mad about it isn't going to help. Yeah. Anybody. So last thing for, for getting started for me is finding the voice and the character. Whatever reference you're comfortable giving them that gets them in the right place, that gets them to a nice, specific enough area to play in, but doesn't, unless you want an impression, that doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like an impression. So again, saying Danny DeVito in a banana suit drunk at a party may get you to a very specific place, but for some people it may get you to sounding like drunk Danny DeVito, yeah. literally. And if that's not actually exactly what you want, then that's a probably too specific a reference um but you know this is a place to talk about of course if you want an accent if you want to convey age or youth um if, how high or low pitch of voice and how if they sound like they're a, a like a, a a really slim build or if they're like a larger person hmm. um if they sound um like if their voice conveys um, like like the difficulty, like they've smoked a lot or mm. kind of had a hard life or any of that thing that might be hard on your voice, mm. um, sort of gravel, that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. gritty, um, all that sort of stuff. This is where you want to start with all those things. Think of all this beforehand and hopefully have a, almost a little spiel ready so that you don't have to fumble for, for it. You just going in, you say, oh, so um, I don't know what casting told you, but just to go over it. We're looking for a, a, a probably a fifty to sixty year old kind of grizzled cowboy sort of thing. Yeah. Not too strong an accent, but do you know do you know regional accents? Because I actually kind of think Oklahoma would be perfect, but we're not too yeah. too picky, right? Yeah. There. So great, we got we got everything we need to know to get in the the ballpark, even a small bar ballpark, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's going to just be what does that actor, how does that actor interpret that? And let's see what what then nudges we need to give. Uh, and again, remembering that those nudges are your job. You you ask for what you need, um, and you just do it in a way that is never rejection. That's always just the next thing. Right? We don't ever need to say no. That's wrong. You just say, "Yes, I am." Why don't you yeah. try it a little more like this? Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, so you're you're doing you you set them in the character. Are you then just kind of like now we go into lines? Or are you doing like let's do a test line, do it a couple times to mm. get the? Do you do that kind of thing, or just Great. right into it? Great question. Yeah. Um. I actually, I love when a voice director has um a line selected to start. That does double duty. That is a great place to find the voice, mm. but maybe that's also kind of a, t- a tricky line, a tongue twistery line, or a really yeah. important line to the, like their character or their story. That's sort of also showing them some about themselves that's deeper than just it's just more than just a playground for their voice, yeah. but like also it kind of you know really they can wrap their their artist brain around and be like, uh, I know who I am now, not just. You know right. the voices, but I knew I am. That's it. I'm glad you said that. That the, is great. Well, and the the Absolutely. parallel I find from game audio is the whole idea of a vertical slice, where you're, where it, like we're gonna make a demo of of a perfected level from soundtrack to to everything, uh, yeah. <laughs> soundtrack and whatever else there is, uh, <laughs> and we're just gonna get the heart and soul of that. So maybe there's a line that's like tells you about his past tells you about what uh, tells you multiple things that would get him in the character better than some other lines like hey how's it going or whatever you know so yep 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 yeah, exactly man. yeah good thought That's cool so tips and tricks so i just got a long list of some tips and tricks here to throw out one always be rolling uh as a voice director this isn't your job it's the engineers mm-hmm but if you're in a studio and you're not sure that something is always recording, and, and it doesn't have to be, like I said, you can, the engineer, you can have a uh, start it and, and, and let it roll approach. So mm-hmm. that is always recording. Cool. That engineer should probably still have a backup just in case, but at least it's always rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, but even the engineer who starts and stops with every take, you probably should still have a backup that's always rolling. Mm-hmm. Um, it is good to let the actor know that as well to say, so you know, we're always rolling in here, or um, you know, we are always we're always recording some, you know, our backups are always recording in here, that sort of thing. Um, just so they, but at this point, again, I feel like with the cameras everywhere and uh, being knowing they're in front of a microphone, I feel like these days actors are very used to the idea that they're always being recorded. Whereas the old system was very much like tape is expensive you never roll when you don't have to right Mm -hmm. and so that's what slating and the starting and stopping is all about um and that meant an actor could be certain that nobody was nobody was rolling because they would have had to hear somebody call rolling and slate a take right otherwise it was safe to speak speak their mind and Mm. you know have that rant that we all hear on the internet now (laughs) so (laughs) uh (laughs) yeah I don't actually don't know that I feel the need to even tell an actor that anymore necessarily. But if I feel like I it, that it, that I get that sense they're a little bit of a loose cannon or they're an oversharer, like maybe you know mm. that uh, I would maybe make that clear. Um, but otherwise, I do think that actors generally tend to expect that. But anyways, the pur- <laughs> purpose for me is always be rolling because you can capture so many things that are actually usable. Laughs are a great one. You tell you say something funny, something funny happens, and that actor it cracks up naturally. That might be if their voice yeah. is similar. If they're doing a voice that's really similar to their own voice, yeah. that might be the best laugh you get all day. Some people yeah, just aren't man. as good at laughs as, as others, right? No, so things like point. that, yeah. and you know, incidental sounds, things that they considered practice, but you're like, well, I actually love that one. You replicate yeah. that, and then they never can. You know, yeah, um, yeah. If you know what it's, if you know what you're doing, you're sure. It, practice takes, for example, can sometimes have like an inflection we love. But they don't actually they aren't actually delivered kind of mm. in a natural full way that fits in right. with everything else. So if you're not a pro, I wouldn't ever count on using a practice take. It's a dangerous thing to get into, and I've seen plenty of people bitten up by it before. But if if you really trust your ears and you're like, oh, I know that we could actually use that take, then yeah, yeah. Um, so awesome, let's see. Um, always be rolling, giving direction again. I'm gonna say it again. Yes, and yes, and yes, and. The main thing to always remember is you just never reject what they just did. Whatever they just did, let it be. It, really, it comes down to you don't even know if maybe you'll change your mind and, be, and need it, right? And say, oh, actually, that was really interesting. But when it comes down to it, it's really just their mindset and their progress process doesn't need you constantly throwing roadblocks in it, mm. right? Doesn't need you constantly saying, no, change direction. No, that's terrible. No, that didn't work. You just tell them where to go. That's what they're doing. You think of them as an engine. They're a car in motion. Just tell them where to turn that. Turn the wheel a little this way. Turn the wheel mm. a little this way. You don't need to tell them to stop the car. <laughs> yeah. Just let them move forward. Yeah. And, and that's that's the way these sessions go. 
So forward, 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 yes, yes, yes. So the simple way is to literally start with, oh, that's great, or a yes, or a kind of affirmation, and then and, mm -hmm. literally, yes, and. But you, you can very quickly, I think, learn to find any phrase that's, um, you can leave off the affirmation and imply it, and it basically just becomes, okay, now let's try this. All right, how about one where maybe the character is actually a little thinking of this a little bit more mm -hmm. or um, what was, what would it sound like if, uh, if, if they were actually like 10, 10 years older than I thought we wanted to make them, you know? So, um, cause again, what you, what you realize after doing this enough is, is they're the ones creating, mm -hmm. you are just giving them, you think of giving them them hints. Yeah. Right. And giving them encouragement. It's kind of the combination of hints and encouragement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Um, they don't have an audience to applaud. They're not gonna, they can't see the vinyl version of this ever. It's not something they do night, at, night after night in a theater, so they yeah. know how well it went. They may not know you at all, so they may not have any idea if that face you're making means you love it or hate it. Right. Right. So keeping that, that that's that's the way to do it. That's, um, is that, yes, Ian. And um, the main thing to avoid is line reads. Like I said, comedy with a specific read is an exception. I, I completely forgive that. And some people forgive more than that. And some people do nothing but line reads. Uh, and and you're, saying, you're saying line reads. <laughs> well, like, I, I disagree strongly. Like, like saying like, oh, say it um, like this. And then you give them the line saying the line. That's what you mean by line reads. Yeah. yeah. Just to clarify yeah. that. Yeah. 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 You say, uh, so get to do like this. What happened to your hair? So then they're trying to mimic you and they'll go, what happened to your hair? And you realize you're not a great actor that they yeah. managed to just mimic you. <laughs> right. It's because that's not their skill. Exactly. They're yeah. not hired to be mimics. Yeah. And it's not your skill. If it is, why aren't you in the booth doing the acting? Right, right. Yeah. That's a great that's, point. You know, yeah. So let the pros do their job. Yeah. And so number one, do not line read. Yeah. There's sort of a hierarchy to it that above line reads would be um, technical terms. There's a lot of, you know, as can you do that maybe just 5% faster? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you need it faster, why? And if the only reason is literally to make it shorter, can you possibly say that with a different, with an additional direction? Mm -hmm. Just a little more urgency. Yeah. A little more of a rush. A little, just rushing a little more. Just like a little bit of a, not enough time to think about this, to get the words out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as opposed to 5% to faster. So, yeah. and the... the <laughs> Pure exception to that for me is I 100% love the read you just did. I just need it quicker. In which case, frankly, your engineer or your editor later can hopefully just do that for you. But yeah, sure, just... try and get one. <laughs> and, and But that's the, you say that, I, I love exactly the read you just did. I just don't think it'll fit in the space. Can you just try that faster? Mm -hmm. That's okay. If you literally just exactly that take, but otherwise never use it as a direct. Why right. is it faster? Right. Why? <laughs> right. Why? Yeah. So yeah. um, and so you get yeah technical terms and then above that are sort of feelings and and emotions and that sort of thing. What are they feeling? That, that's where we get in the realm of okay, that's pretty good. And generic ones like sad, not super specific, but you could say a word like forlorn mm -hmm. um, or wistful, and that might suddenly imply a lot more things than just sad, right? Have a have a thesaurus handy just at your booth, at least at the beginning it, stages. It, it means <laughs> avoid verbal diarrhea. Because right, the first things right. out are often the simplest things. Yeah. Take time to formulate that, and it's okay. That's what that's the process takes time, and it, sometimes there's a, an, a energy where you feed off each other, and everything seems to snowball down a hill for a while. But mm. if that snowball down a hill includes you saying things like uh, "faster, faster," right? Yeah, just give me too faster. Then you're you are sacrificing something. Yeah, yeah. You really are. You're missing chances to get better reads or get to that read you want faster. You know. Yeah. Um, and at the top of this pyramid, to me, are the really picture painting ones and i've known a few directors who just excel at this and it's just amazing and so instead of sad or instead of forlorn or wistful you say right now i feel like your character is is a boy who just hung up the phone after this girl he rejected him to go to the dance he, he got up the guts to ask her and she rejected him and this is the moment he hangs up the phone mm -hmm. what are you going to get after that you're going to get something not just specific, but like you've created, you, you help them feel the emotion and, yeah. and picture 
something very tangible, really, like, and, and also relatable. Sometimes this is about relatability, right? It's like the George Carlin comedy routine. Yeah. <laughs> He's so darn funny sometimes because we all go, oh, that moment. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, a lot of the directing is, is that, is you, you people will go, that moment. Oh, well, that moment. and I, I love... They get there. Like, because that's, instead of just an adjective, you're, gi- you're giving them a setting, like you're you're describing yeah. a setting in which they can go. There's your launch point, kind of yeah. thing. Love that. That's it's a awesome. word. Intention and motivation come up a lot, and it's just thing. Not everything has or needs a motivation in that one moment. Sometimes, yeah, you know, it isn't as big as a motivation or okay. an intention. But yeah, um, okay, it, it, those are important words too. And if you can build that in, if you build an intention, they want this or they're trying to achieve this. That's important. If that is something that they, that's happening. Yeah. But sometimes, like that moment right there, I don't think you have an intention. Your intention is to probably to cry your eyes out in a moment, right. like I, you know, that I don't think intention is the right word for every one of those, reaction. Those I guess definitely yeah. factor in. Yeah. yeah. Um, loud material. Quick thing about loud yeah, material. Uh, if at all possible, it can really help to bundle that up and save it to the end. Now, obviously, you can sacrifice the continuity. But sometimes that's really worth it to make sure you don't sacrifice their voice and the rest oh, of the session. Oh, I was going to ask. Yeah, that so makes sense. Yeah. We, got, we got 70 lines, and the fourth one is a gut-wrenching scream. Well, let's save that for the end. Right, yeah. yeah. There's engineering advice and stuff we could do on that, too. But, like, you know, the your basics would be um, one great way if you have an engineer who's having trouble handling the level of, of a scream, uh, I've known a few actors who could peek out almost any microphone. It's actually <laughs> terrifying. It's like, I think this means, this means like just by pure decibel rating, that means you are like <laughs> yeah. louder than a jet engine, Jesus. you know, basically. Yeah. yeah uh, it's insane. So, um, if there happens to be like U87s are actually a often popular mic and they don't have a great SPL rating, you can absolutely clip a, 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 a U87 by with a big scream. Mm-hmm. So, um, Really great tri- trick for me has been just turn 45 degrees. Keep your mm-hmm. mouth in the same place, but turn 45 degrees. Because mm-hmm. you're still going to hear mostly that same good sound. It's just most of the actual sound the pressure actual is going straight of the forward. Air pressure, yeah. So this is just, it's low enough that you're able to not clip, but you hear that that still pretty accurate, real close sound. Yeah. Um, you can, of course, always just back off the mic, but you have to be very aware are you in a really dead room? And then, the, yeah, the room you got. And are you that. on a mic? Yeah. And do you and do you hear the mic response change? If you're working fairly close to a mic, you might feel it get a lot thinner. Yeah. So it's always ideal to not work too close to the mic, but if you're in a really roomy yeah. studio, you kinda need to. So given all those factors, hopefully your engineer is working all this out for you. But um if you if they're having problems, that one's a good trick. Yeah. Um let's see. Mouth noise. Uh take a drink of water is a big one. Uh that's all it can take sometimes. What do we got there? Apple? So green apples can be good. Okay. Green apples be good for mouth noise. Once it's chewed and swallowed, of course, it's yeah. pretty disgusting until then. <laughs> uh, so just taking a bite of the a green apple can be really good for mouth noise. And I, I, I think I may touch on this later uh, in, a, in another context, but um, also for um, also for scratchy throat and that sort of thing. You can get five or ten extra minutes out of a voice from just from really? a bite of a green apple. And is that, so I really, mean, like the content like the sugar the acid or whatever in it or i i i really wish i had managed to find like a scientific explanation okay. of that before i did i'll that. trust I, you. I have no idea <laughs> I, I from what i've heard there's a couple combination of things that are good for voice and it's acidity mm-hmm. to a minor extent with uh with sugars okay. and fluids so yeah. yeah juicy sweet and i think maybe the green apple has a little bit more acidity so maybe it's in that ballpark it's tea with honey and sour, lemon yeah. is another one right yeah. Um, not cold. Um, if you do cold, you want to follow it with heat. So that's why again, warm tea, hot tea, room temperature water, mm-hmm. and uh, apple, not just out of the fridge, um, awesome. are are really good. Um, uh, there's know. not many other things you hate. It is possible to remove them later, but it could be a major pain in the butt depending on how bad they are. Uh, mm-hmm. So really try to avoid them if you yeah. can. At least a blanket of you know mouth noise is, right. is just awful. Yeah, there's always a, occasional ones, and that's fine. NPR. Uh, throat problems, right? It's you're in the middle of session, actors having throat problems. So uh, there's basic throat care stuff that most actors, especially if it's a voice actor, but even like theater actors, and I think probably many stage uh, film actors too and TV, because their their voice is a professional tool, and if it's not sounding good, they really can't do their job. Most of them will try to take care of it. Um, it's too late to avoid uh, 
al- hard alcohol and uh, smoke, you know, cigarette smoke and, and marijuana, but hopefully they're doing that. And hopefully there's no smoke in or around your, your facility. Mm-hmm. But I'll just mention it in case anybody's like considering going to VO, but also cannot quit the, uh, <laughs> the, the marijuana. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe choose one or the other. Yeah. Uh, but also, um, so yeah, again, room temperature water, warm drinks. And I'm finding like lately right now, my, my throat's not great. And I'm finding even like just a, a cafe au lait, like coffee with milk seems to have it doesn't have the acidity but the warmth and the sugar still seems to do something for mm. me it'll definitely soothe my throat a bit okay so it, it doesn't hurt if you have any control over it with the studio that you're in to have those things uh, well, room temperature water cold water just in case somebody asks um uh tea honey lemon coffee milk creamer and green apples the, between those and I would say in cough drops. There's another one. If you get like a couple varieties of cough drops, sometimes that can get an extra five or 10 minutes out of a voice in certain types of scratchiness and, and everything. If a green apple doesn't work, try cough drop. Love it. Um, but it's awesome. more than that, they, they probably just aren't going to make it and they need to go home and hopefully they haven't gotten everybody sick while they're there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, sometimes this is just scream and then your voice goes, it's not being sick. So you can right. you're like, Oh, we need to finish this session. What can we, those things can absolutely help. Yeah. Um, physical limitations. Do you ask crazy things of actors, and actors generally say yes and do them. Yeah. Um, and in some ideal world, I'd say no, it's entirely 100% on the actor to protect themselves and say no to us. Again, we are their boss, or even if we're not the one who hired them, we are sort of representing their boss in this moment, right? We're telling them what to do, and they're getting paid to do it. Right. So for me to say, keep doing this thing, even though I'm gonna be pretty sure right now it's hurting you, mm is bad do do that you gotta respect the actor those actors will want to come back and work for you over and over and over again when they realize they don't have to sacrifice their well-being to do it yeah (laughs) and vice versa they'll take the money but boy as soon as they don't need your money they're out of there it's like these things destroy my voice they could destroy my career nobody's nobody like anybody in a production especially in film it's just like this hollywood mentality of like i don't want to be the person to slow anything down so I can yeah, see how yeah. actors get probably if if you even like have somebody new behind the booth or like just someone who doesn't have a sense of you know empathy like that like they could take advantage of that because they're probably just going to do it cause absolutely it's like, you they know how will. many people are yeah, lined up for this job they will. Like, <laughs> yeah so that's a big one when it comes to creature voices when it comes to really loud uh, loud voices that with a lot of anger or rage with things with a lot of grit but it also physical limitations can sometimes mean things that are outside the just the normal range of their voice if they have mm-hmm. to strain to do it their voice is just going to run out sooner yeah um you know there's things you could do with good vocal te- technique and but there's also things that that if you didn't have that sort of vocal training you might choose to do and not realize you can't maybe keep this up for 100 lines uh, 200 lines every time you come in yeah so there are discussions to be had around that too because that's partially a casting thing that if you cast somebody who does a lot of great voices but they have to hurt themselves to do it, then it probably still isn't the right choice. Yeah. It also, physical limitations can also mean just trying to accommodate whoever's in there in whatever way you can um, to let them do their job well. Um, I recorded somebody in a, a wheelchair uh, once. I was actually a little surprised it was only once. It's also pretty much sad I'd say that it was only once. He actually even asked me help to move his leg over, a, like put it in a different place. I think off of his, he wanted it off of the, the, the footrest and onto the ground. Hmm. But again, his request, right? I'm not hmm. offering things like this, but I say, hey, anything you need to be comfortable, with, anything we yeah, can help yeah. you. Um, so, you know, a voice director in that way could could be observant for any way that if somebody falls into any bit of an unusual category, anything that isn't just a person stands at the mic and com- talk, comfortably talks into the microphone, right? Hmm. Anything beyond that could be something that can um, be pushing somebody somewhere that are, they're uncomfortable or um, hiding that it can really be hurting them uh, or difficult. Or even so, just, and that's, like, that can be things like somebody in a wheelchair, really tall, really short, and if they have to, if they are feeling they have to crane or stretch yeah, or hunch, yeah. like oh, things just don't go high or low enough for them, being in the wrong place. Now I'm realizing how long I've been sitting in this chair, and I'm just kind of like, I need to stretch. Yeah, watching out for physical limitations like that, and and trying to be a defender for people, um, protector. Headphones and booth speakers. So uh, I've worked at shockingly a list places that what they do and what they want is for the speaker to be a speaker in the booth and have that speaker on. And that is the talkback speaker. 
And the okay. reason that it works, right, is because those people are pretty well trained on how to use that talkback. And they know if they chime in, they're going to screw up a take. Mm -hmm. So in some of those cases, it happened more often than I would like. They, yeah, they ruined a take, but they know it, and they are trying not to. And in one of those studios, I don't think I literally ever saw it happen because they were so on top of it that they just knew. And they just yeah. they, they felt the process. They felt that, you know let the actor do their thing and then I'll, and then I'll make sure they're done. But sometimes it's just an actor's doing a zillion takes because they're inspired or they haven't, don't think they found it yet. And then you're like, Oh, I want to give you direction. So, yeah. you know, um, the, the, the headphones are definitely the cleaner way. And the thing about the headphones, I think this, the booth speaker isn't just, isn't just because they can. The main reason is because headphones can be very, they can change the way actors act. Um, mm. when you hear your own voice, you're, you're sort of in this feedback loop where you're mm. listening to your voice and doing what works for your voice. And you can become a little more announcery and a little more quiet because mm. everything you do sounds loud in your ears, right? Yeah. You can whisper and you're still hearing it. So it's really, um, it can be really beneficial not to have to have headphones. So in that case, you have to have the booth speaker to communicate, yeah. right? But then the person is free and they're just acting again, which is especially valuable maybe for, um, anybody who's not a really seasoned voice actor. Um, season voice actor will generally be used to it. They're listening and saying, how will my voice sound in that final product? They're not yeah. saying, oh, it's loud. I should be quieter. They're kind of processing this final product and saying, does this sound like a Saturday morning cartoon? And, right. Or like yeah. a, you know, whatever it's supposed to be. Does this sound like what it's supposed to be? Uh, but so, and then along those lines, a great trick for somebody who is in their own head about this and, and seems to not be... Um, kind of acting to their full capacity and maybe it's quieter than you expect and all that sort of thing and say, Hey, let me try something. We just have you take one headphone off. Right. And sometimes that is enough that this ear is now hearing the real world. Mm -hmm. And this is just a reference that it, so you can hear, and it also lets them hear the, the director. So you still shouldn't get any bleed from this typically if, you know, depending on how the headphones built. So this mm -hmm. is kind of the best of both worlds. If an actor is okay with it, be that it could be, this depending how the, their head is shaped and how the yeah. headphones are, are shaped but that can be a workaround too mostly I just see one or the other you know and um, a lot of the, the, again the, the A-list places are often going without headphones because the better acting you yeah. might get from it so uh, and some of those A-list places the director is in the room with them uh, whereas often I feel like in TV maybe every place I've been um, those actors those directors are in the control room using the talk back because um, they don't want to have to be quiet, but also because there can be collaboration. I want to ask the writer things. I want to talk about this with so-and-so, mm -hmm. you know. Um, whereas in those a real A-list situations that they're in the room, it's pretty singular. If they want feedback, they'll ask. Or if somebody needs to give feedback, they'll chime and say, oh, hey, I, I think that we changed that line. Cool. Fine if the actor hears that, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, it, that's like singular one leader. So it depends on on several factors, but there's your different situations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Plosives. Uh, just a quick trick for, trick for plosives. Um, obviously, you have your 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 you know popper stoppers, the the the, the round thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody probably knows uh, if you've been in in audio any amount of time that you can make your own popper stopper with uh, craft hoop and uh, and pantyhose. I've heard I've right? heard um, wire hanger. They work pretty well. And pantyhose, but what is Ooh. it? Craft tube. Like a like that a... sounds challenging. Craft tube. Yeah, because it's like for for. Um, so whatever it calls it is a cross stitch. I forget what it is. Oh, those little tubes, circles. But... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because that's basically the same thing. Is what is what basically what a popper stopper is is a branded version of that. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing I always thought about that recommendation is well, so then you have to go to a craft store and buy things that probably almost as expensive as buying the popper stopper, anyways. But right. whatever. So the, the the other interesting way that you can do this two things. One is just like screams, you can turn off uh, mic a little bit, mm -hmm. same distance, but just turn. Um, yeah. Not moving, turn, and uh, also sometimes this can uh, do it. Depending where the, the plosives are coming from, I feel like some people it's full width of their mouth, and you know you, that's just how it. Like maybe they're that's yeah. doing a lot of actual puffing, but for me, I think this might work because I feel if I do peas, I'm really only feeling it right here, and so by doing this, you break up that big plosive sound wave and send it off this direction, and it is. Oh, you literally you're holding mic. your finger there. This, while that's just in front, yeah, just, just right in front, barely touching ah. my lips. Not so it inhibits movement. 
Yeah, because it's yeah. going. It's just it's veeing it out. Inter- okay. There you go. Yeah, because that's not disrupt yeah. disrupting um, the. I don't know if that yeah. made a difference. And if but. somebody has really strong plosives, another approach could be uh, adding a second popper stopper. But you have to then hope your engineer has really good ears and can tell you: Are we making this sound a little bit duller in a way that's that's not worth it? Just put a pillowcase over their head. An take out. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know. Hey, that'll work. Uh, yeah. So maybe we'd rather just deal with a few. If it's just a few plosives, we just rather deal with that and not have yeah. the whole thing be too dull. Right. Um, let's see. What else? Dynamic lines and actors. Okay, right. When actors uh, get really active, either physically or their range, uh, their volume, right? So um, volume range, this is really mostly an engineering thing. If it's just about actors who are suddenly loud, suddenly quiet, this is mostly an engineering thing. But you may have your engineer ask you if you can break up a line. And again, the end product is what people hear and see on TV, right? It's not what's happening in the booth. So, mm-hmm. and actors are capable of a great many things. We don't want to ask them to do things they don't have to, but it might be necessary to get that end product mm. to break up this line where they suddenly go from whispering to screaming. And the only thing I would say is to the extent that it's possible, try to get them to just about begin the next thing. So let's say... Yeah, um, leave a leave a. Let's like say they a, say a tab. They can, you know, you can stitch right. together. There yeah. should be a breath, and their mouth should go to the next shape, mm. right? And then it should start from the previous place shape, and then right. So let's say it's like oh that. my god, it bit me, and then they're supposed to start screaming, right? So the oh my god, it bit me should be really quiet for whatever reason, and then the I mean I'm making this up. I don't know why it'd be quiet. Sure, yeah. <laughs> let's say that's supposed to be quiet, and then the screaming is of course screaming. So you would want you'd say. So can you give me the, oh, my God, it bit me, and inhale yeah. Yeah. and go, as if you're about to scream. You can even say, ah, if it helps. Just don't actually scream. Yeah. And that sort of thing. Then yeah, when you edit it together, it can sound much more convincing. Otherwise, you have, oh, my God, it bit me, ah, and there's no, there isn't a natural sense of the progression and the connection right. with the breath and the intensity and yeah. of our bodies. We're so attuned to, like, the we can hear that tension and that yeah. The breath that you take when you're about to scream is going to be different than the breath you take when you're about to say something. Yeah, that we can exactly. Yeah. So, um, so having them continue as much as possible without actually doing the screaming, and then when they do the scream, like if you already got that convincingly, then yeah, you just say scream. That's fine. Then you just cut in the screams. Um, But then let's say that screaming had to go back to speaking. You might have to the same thing. You might have to go give me the scream, "Ah!" and then and then the breath into what you're going to say, and just. We can't use the same, but let's just say a few words of it. You know, right? That sort of thing. Getting edit points and get, getting this natural flow that will connect it together naturally, even though he didn't do it or she didn't do it all in one. Mm-hmm. You know, physically dynamic, amazing solution for an actor who moves around a lot because you can you well two things. I'll actually say two things. One is sometimes just your eyes are enough. If you say it once, many actors will then notice you looking at the microphone and assume that they're wandering off the mic. I love this trick. Okay. Um, so you say it once, you say, oh, hey, I'm so sorry. Um, just wandering off the mic a little bit. And you just do that again into the mic. And if you just kind of stare at the mic and use your hand, just, just stay on stay on my mic and, and uh, give me another one. And then next time they're off mic, you just kind of give them the same kind of stare at the mic moment. Um, yeah. And if they happen to catch that gaze, I've just seen so many actors just like, they just, you see them like, yeah. oh, they, they got it. They totally got it. <laughs> Didn't have to say anything. Nice. And it happened almost subconsciously. Nice. If they're not getting it and they just keep forgetting, there's not much you can do besides continuing to ask. Uh, aside from prepare ahead of time, and this, this really means the studio, by having a, a means or a device to, to keep them there and maybe even to transfer their energy. So sometimes, for example, this can be a small, small area rug that limits them so that if they feel themselves, they could, could feel themselves step off the edge of the rug. And so you can say, oh, just, just make sure uh, you stay on that rug. And obviously, it's going to be a yeah. quiet uh, rug, so it's probably shag or something that's really, really quiet, um, but, but that they'll feel the edge of. Um, that's so smart. I love a, that. A way to go. Little subtle things. But my favorite solution, my favorite solution is the, the VO bar, the efforts bar. And that is, and you have to, you'd have to make this one very, very well. It has to be like very professional machined. I haven't seen them sold anywhere, but 
um, if you have connections to someone handy, this is the way to go. A bar that it goes along, at least the front. It could also be the sides, um, but probably the front. I feel like the sides could be limiting in case you had somebody who was just of like a wider stature or something. Maybe that's not a good idea. Or if you had to record somebody in a wheelchair or something. Also, have to be something mobile. You have to worry yeah. about height because if it's something really short, like a little kid or somebody really short, that this bar could get in the way. So you have to be mm. able to move it. But for people within a certain range of height, um, basically probably ninety-five percent of people who would be in your 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 booth, they can just grab onto this bar, and and that's what you say. You say, hey, you can just. Um, the, the efforts are sounding great, but just wandering off mic. You, would you mind just holding on to that bar while you do, man? You can kind of, I use the words, you can transfer some of your energy there. Mm. And people just kind of seem to intuitively get mm. that. Transfer your energy there. Okay, so instead of this, I can go. Right? Yeah. So their clothes make less, less noise. The, their head isn't off mic. They're not, like some people, when they act on, like, they're just, if they're not full time voice actors, they're mostly screen actors they're gonna like you'd be surprised right like yeah. just they see, the, the extreme example is oh hey just pretend that person just went behind you and you're calling after them and they'll go they'll, like yeah, oh no, no that's what i would and do. actually <laughs> turn away from the microphone <laughs> yeah right and it makes sense if, yeah. if most of what you do is act that you do you do what the director yeah does. you're just you're, like, you're you go, embodying you the, yeah, yeah you do the heck out of it yeah yeah so uh it's understandable but so this bar it is such a just a shortcut to like 95 percent of those problems go away it's amazing. That's cool. um, it has to be super quiet, really heavy, so it doesn't move or create its own sound, wobble, wiggle. Yeah. So the version I've seen was on a, a like a heavy metal platform. The whole thing probably weighed a few hundred pounds, maybe a yeah. hundred pounds or more. Um, and like m metal bars welded to it, that sort of thing. But yeah, and then wrapped with you know wrapped with stuff, so it wasn't metal. It was like foam or, or tape and foam. Uh, but it was great and it looked really sharp and um, it solved so many problems. Yeah. Um, but that's again something you can't really do for the studio they got to do that for themselves but, yeah um, oh improv versus staying on script um actors for the most part improv improv seems to be somewhere between allowed and expected for many acting gigs especially these days i feel like in the old days we very much came from learn the script memorize the script mm. stay on the darn script and there's still plenty of times you're gonna want to actors are gonna be staying on the darn script um, and then, but, and then Judd Apatow started making movies and everything. <laughs> I'm sure there's definitely been some singular directors who have actually really influenced us. I think you're probably not totally wrong. You can run into actors who is actually very difficult for them to even stay on script. Um, and, and there you might need to focus your energy on keeping them on script rather than at some point you might have to ban in all the cool ideas that might come out with improv and say, but we, I know we need these lines, so I have to actually just let's work towards getting these lines, and I'm going to try and learn what I can do to help them just stay on script. Yeah. Um, and feel good about staying on script. That's the thing. is you, have, you can't be saying, no, don't. I don't want that. You, cannot, you just want to be saying, oh, hey, can we just get it once more as scripted? I love all your improv. It's amazing. I just want to make sure we also get it as scripted. Yeah. So I, what I do, I said, I love it. I use also, yes and, right? Yeah, and I didn't say no. So yeah. You may have to say that a hundred times for there's a couple of actors I've recorded. We have to say that on almost every line. Yeah. But um, then you make sure you get what you need. And then, hey, if the improv works, cool. But of course, improv, sometimes things are written with a certain words because you need those words. Mm -hmm. You needed to refer to this person. You need to, yeah. to reference for a situation reasons. that happened before. You chose one word because it's the story or because somebody else used that word earlier or, you know. Yeah. Who knows how many reasons? There's infinite reasons. Yeah. So I would always try to get it as written, allow for improv, even encourage it if somebody's good at it. Mm -hmm. Always get it as written. Um, yeah. And just find the positive ways to do it and appreciate the improv and um, hopefully keep on schedule. It can obviously add to the time. If you're trying to get it two ways every time, then your session can grow. So there's a sort of prioritization. And most actors, of course, sense this, but you got your outliers who are really good at improv or, you know, love to talk a lot you know yeah. uh it happens um it experienced nerves and discomfort um you may be so if you're handling somebody who's um themselves is maybe sort of a newer actor i've been in the booth with plenty of actors who are is their first major session or mm. um first first time you know maybe they've done a bunch of video but nothing at that level before yeah um and you can just tell if they're nervous um uh, i would say go back to that beginning of the day Thing, like I said, like like um, 
the vibes you want to set. Yeah. Just return to that. You don't need anything particularly special. Just just like the good vibes, and you just you can encourage them. I mean, like yeah. especially if this comes in the middle of the session, you could you just easily say, "You're doing great. No worries." Yeah, I love what you're doing. You know, this is this is yeah. going well. Um, some people have a magic disarming thing. I'm not I don't put myself at the top of this list. I've been around people I just practically worship for how they could just be disarming and, and instill this comfort. And sometimes it might be asking them a question. Sometimes it might be, I, I don't encourage this, but the right person could like get sarcastic with them or like insult yeah. them. Like I've heard people yeah. be like, oh, yeah, you know, honestly, I was thinking the same thing. You kind of suck. Yeah. <laughs> But that person it depends on the relationship knows their and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Humor, and they know right. They know they are making at least a very good guess, or maybe they know yeah. this actor can handle that, and that'll actually be the right thing to do. Yeah. So you got to know yourself and know the situation. Yeah. But it just comes down to to they're going to give you the best work if they feel comfortable. So what am I going to feel comfortable in that moment? Sure. I stick to mostly encouraging stuff. I have a few actors yeah, I have like course. specific relationships with, where I can get snarky. With, for sure. <laughs> yeah. But. Yeah. Uh, uh, difficult lines, difficult lines, um, just suggestions for getting through difficult lines. Uh, you, you can, again, break things up um, if it's difficult because it's long or wordy. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's difficult because there's tongue twisters. Um, many actors have ways of dealing with this themselves, but some need the, the little bit of a kick. They'll try 10 or 15 times to plow through and it isn't working. And... Um, Honestly, feel free to, if you feel confident about this, just feel free to lead them through, like, untongue tying something. Say, hey, you know, that, that, one's a, that one's a beast, isn't it? Yeah. Um, can you try just this real quick? And, you know, you give them, um, generally you break down, and if it's a tongue twister, you can give them the word before and the tongue twister moment and the word after. And have them say that slowly. Mm-hmm. And the key is saying it correctly, not fast, saying it correctly. And say, so, so you want just slow. He's like, can you just, just, just slowly, you know, say this like five or ten times? Blah, 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 blah. And then say, okay. And then again, actors will generally just do this. They're, they, they're like, oh, yeah, the director says do this, I do this. And mm-hmm. so they'll go through it. And that usually helps. Um, it's, it's, saying the thing correctly over and over and over they weren't ever saying it correctly they were just getting really bad at saying it wrong basically right <laughs> yeah so, um, yeah i like that they're not practicing and saying it right ever so slow it down and you say it right several times and your mouth blah, 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 yeah. and then when you get to that place your mouth sort of automatically makes that shape right if it's difficult for breath reason that's a t- that's another one and that's mm. a lot like the screaming this quiet loud thing the dynamic lines you can break up a line if it's like they're supposed to get through something in one long breath you can break it up, but you have to be very careful to overlap your parts quite a bit. So you have yeah. cutting points. Yeah. Since there's no breaths, it's, I think it's important for a voice director to be aware of at least the basics in cutting, which is that basically fricatives and uh, plosives and uh, uh, sibilants, those are all pretty darn good, especially sibilants and fricatives. So that's your F, that's your T, uh, your S. Um, these sounds have no voice in them. We don't ever go, t- we don't say T with a, that's a, that's a D, right? Is it D, right? That's yeah. a T with a voice is a D. D so D, a T, D, D is, yeah. we can cut there. Anyway, like one T and the next T, they all sound very similar. And I don't mean that literally if you're an editor, you know that's not totally true. But in right. terms of cutting in the middle of the line, a T is a cutting place, an S and F, things like that. So you want to make sure you overlap at least a couple of those with your words. So mm. to find, if you say, okay, well, breath, they can make it through here, um, then we want to make sure we back up a couple of those cutting points and start from there for the next segment. Yeah, okay. That would allows two things. One, cutting points. Two, they get that sort of energy, that momentum, that head of steam. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that they, they can sort of match that same level they were at before, right? Mm. Um, so creature stuff. Okay, efforts and vocalizations. Just like any screams but for kind of additional reasons uh efforts of vocalizations can kind of be saved towards the end sometimes Mm -hmm. sometimes it's because it's difficult in the voice sometimes it's because um they can pop up in places that's kind of just superfluous like like they're part of things that sometimes it's this long struggle takes place and like maybe we don't need to go through that whole struggle right now and and wear them out mentally and physically getting all these grunts and things Mm -hmm. or Maybe it's not that long a deal, and it kind of fits in between two lines. So yeah, naturally, let's 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 do this grunt now. Let's like, like do this line, then the grunt, and then this line, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, because maybe that actually helps with the kind of the the the, the energy of it. 
cool. So you, you can make that call, but sometimes if there's a lot of that stuff, you just you could save it for the end and just breeze through it, which also helps with this sense of sort of a, a compliment, accomplishment that, yeah, we're actually done with the session and then we just have this stuff as opposed to, oh my God, 40 lines left and I got all these grunts to do and still, you know, right, uh, right. it's a better feeling, I think, to be through the, the, the meaty stuff and just like, all right, let's make some noises and then leave. Uh, yeah. I think the actors yeah. can feel pretty good about getting to that place. Yeah. Um, and another reason is in many situations, you might be able to have, uh, if you have a loop group on like a television show uh, or in film, possibly in, uh, in games, this is less flexibility because you put your loop group probably won't come in towards, until towards the end in games but you have actors a lot before then, so then you'd end up without those efforts in there for a long time. So you may be more likely to have your actors do those efforts in games. I've heard whole huge sessions of efforts in games. So this more applies probably to TV and film, but mm -hmm. that your loop group may be able to cover those. And you may also have a library. If that character has been on a lot before, you may be able to just uh, you pull in things from that. And another op opportunity uh, option, another option in some cases may be temping. Um, it may be that on the game you're working on, in a stage it's on, it's okay to just that they'll have somebody temp that line and stick in an a temp. And the temps are labeled carefully and carefully cataloged so they don't mm -hmm. end up in the game. Mm -hmm. um, that's I think there's different philosophies about that, about sure, how, sure. How, what you let in ev ever be in the game engine, right? <laughs> uh, it, yeah, exactly. But I know at some point there's placeholders used for lots of things. You just don't right. want it to ship with, you know, say, <laughs> voice direction. <laughs> Stop yeah, it sounded pretty good. Yeah. yeah, what do you think? All right, or let's go. Let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> your PA badly reading a line because they yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So there are options uh, sometimes, but otherwise it's, it's totally okay to save them for the end unless you feel it contributes to the flow. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's uh, then, great, the, the trick then is hopefully you have an audio coordinator, somebody who's really, really organized with that script so you don't miss any because they're so small and easy to miss. And hopefully they're yeah. marked carefully in the script as well as the lines, even though they don't always have a separate line number. It's good to always circle, highlight, number them separately, even though they may not have a line of their own. Stay uh, organized. Own. Yeah. They need one ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, ideally, ultimately, every sound an actor is supposed to make needs a line number, needs a, needs a way to identify it. Mm -hmm. Um Let's see what else. We're almost there. Don't watch. Listen. Oh, one of my best pieces of advice. I was looking forward to this one in especially particular. Especially <laughs> for, uh, especially for new newer people for voice direction. This one does not apply to ADR. But there's a lot of this stuff. Don't totally does. Um, different mics, different situation, but a lot of it's the same. You know. Um, look, uh, listen. Don't look. I don't actually say with ADR. It actually kind of applies as well. But there you want to look at you want to look at the final picture. So you do want to look. You just don't want to look at the actor. Right. In VO, do not look at the actor unless you're a really special person. You look at the actor is you enjoying and appreciating everything about them that they bring as an actor. Mm -hmm. All the acting they might be yeah. doing with their face, with their body language. Yeah. That is not going to make it into the final cartoon yeah. or video game. <laughs> right. Right. Makes sense. It may be used in uh, mocap, in which case, different problem. Hopefully, there's somebody there evaluating that and saying, oh, well, for the mocap part, could we do this change your expression? Cool. Mm -hmm. But for the voice, if it's just a voice question, you're not going to hear that amazing thing they just did that you found so funny. The audience isn't going to find it funny because they aren't going to see it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, which and is, I, I see this so that's, much. It's so not much. something you would necessarily, like, I wouldn't even, like, that would happen and I wouldn't know that I was doing that, you know, unless I was consciously, and like, you, just, you sit down later with it, yeah. review it, and, and like, it doesn't read, like, like the same, like, funny? Well, I thought that was so funny, but why is it not, you know, it doesn't track That's now. why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Most of the time, that is why. Because people yeah. loved it when that actor did that funny looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, it could be they say funny. their you line and they it. give you a look that's like, that's hilarious. That's where all the comedy is, but it's not. It's, yeah. Audio yep. medium. And it goes with drama, too. You know, that actor, that read was so intense. And you're like, yeah. where's the intensity I thought I heard? Oh, it was all in their eyes. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. Ah, too bad. So yeah. do not look at them. And if you're uncomfortable with the idea of this, if you feel it might be conveying the wrong thing, uh, you, you can say, hey, just so you know, I, I don't look at you just so I make sure I'm judging only by your voice, like, not to be antisocial. Or something. Yeah. You can explain it to them if, if you feel it's needed. That's fine. Um, but don't, just don't watch them do the stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, what, great, What's yeah. next? Here's another. So early on, I mentioned James Scullion, uh, voice and ADR director, uh, gave me a few tips. And here's another, one, another couple of them. Macro and micro. 
Okay. This is sort of a nice high level philosophical thing, philosophical thing. Mm -hmm. Did I say falafel thing? I think Something I did. like that. <laughs> I just um, went with it. <laughs> do do one more it's, and um, say the right word. Be better. <laughs> I went with no, words yeah. that actually exist, <laughs> exist. Yeah. In the English language. <laughs> um, so macro and micro. Uh, this again. This I find applying to any creation of any art and any capacity, whether you're in charge of sort of the direction of it or whether you're the one doing it, yeah, you have levels that you need to get very zoomed in and levels where you need to stay very zoomed out. And it's a kind of a special ability, but you really need to try and hone your ability to do both, um, to worry about every little word and every little thing, but also to back up and say, how much time do we have? What... Um, mm what are the actual needs of this project, yeah. right? That's a, that's a big one. Like, it's so easy. To, you can, especially as a voice director, if you're doing multiple shows, you have to remember the needs of that project. And that may sound like a given, but you carry a lot of things with you that are your tools as a voice director and your aesthetic totally. and your preferences. And you have to make sure that you are completely succumbing to the needs of the show yeah. other than those, other than the core stuff that is like technique and, uh, and 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 basic uh, decorum and stuff like that. Like, fine, you always be a professional. Sure, that's mm -hmm. not different from show to show. But how this show works may be very different, and the style of of its comedy, or um, you know, how the, the the temperament of each actor, everything. Like, so um, definitely that macro level. Oh, this this different different needs, different situation, things like your overall sort of philosophy. Why are, why are you doing this, and how do we do it? How we do? How do we do it, and why? It's probably the shortest way to say what a philosophy really is, right? How and why, things like that, always in the back of your head. And I think it's great to review them. Maybe you don't. That's not a post that you pull out in the middle of a session, right? You know, but that's like something you review, and that's what you, something you get from reading or from going to conferences or sessions or or classes or things, and you kind of get inspired. That's the stuff that you, you review it and just keep trying to grow, growing those things. But also, those flow in the back of your head, and then in the session, you got to kind of those in mind but then dig in on those details yeah but always keep those in mind but dig, dig in on those it's, it's yeah. an interesting yeah. dance james scullion once again voice and adr director uh recommended strongly recommended the book directing actors by judith weston which i think is decades old now and, and which and i will link in the description um, of twitch or somewhere there you go link <laughs> last stage here finishing up um personnel check-in just like when you started Right when that session ends, you're about to launch into a new moment of chaos, right? Actor leaves, we want to say some goodbyes, and everybody's going to go back to do whatever their job is or the next session or something. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to not let everything, you know, I, I think to give everybody like a little quick breath of like, hey, we're done, we're switching gears, and, and it doesn't need to be a panic, right? Uh, right. And so the, just a nice way to do that is for anybody in, of the session, which again is largely a voiceover director uh, in many situations, is uh, you know you thank your actor, of course, and and have your your moment. They're getting out of the booth. You're about to go meet him. You say, "So, uh, everybody, good? We get everything we need. Uh, any questions? You need anybody need anything from me? You know, yeah. And just really like make eye contact with everybody in the room and just make sure everybody really feels good about it. Because sometimes yeah. people are holding on to those things till the end of the session. Sometimes say people are holding on to those things until they're invited to contribute. You know, and um, that's the moment before the actor's gone, before everything is, is over. Now is your moment to like check in with people. Um, wrapping an actor, um, it's again always good to express your gratitude and appreciation. What they do is really hard. And um, just like the project, just like you're trying to find the best in that project, I think you, you always try to find the best in that actor. Any, whoever's in the booth in front of you should be your favorite actor right now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if you manage to feel that way and, and find those things to feel that way about, then you can also express them. And, you know, that, that's a great moment to express them and wrapping it up to say, Hey man, you're, you're so good at this and this and this. You be really specific because you just saw it. Right. And you say, you're so good at this and this and this. And I uh, really appreciate your time. Hmm. Or man, I know this was a long, difficult session and you're a trooper and I promise not to do this to you very often. Right. Or, yeah. you know, but something that says, I appreciate you, I see you, I recognize your hard work, and uh, that you are a super pro, um, and that we want to work with you again. Right. And honestly, even if you don't want to work with them again, it may not be up to you. Keep that door open. You sure. might still have to work with them again. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. So, um, in essence, you want to want to work with everybody again. Um, 
let's see, confirming next steps. Once that actor is gone, and ideally, hopefully, before everybody else is gone too. So this may come right be- also right before you're actually kind of wrapping that actor. You might have that wrap up moment with everybody in the booth, and then need to say, um, depending on what you know and how professional everybody is. If again, if it's if it's a if it's a couple people who don't know what they're doing versus like four people who all have very well defined roles and they know exactly what to do, right? It can it can happen. You can have all of it. So. If everybody's a pro, you probably already know the answer to this, or maybe it's your first time in this particular studio, so you just want to check. Yeah. Um, but like, oh, hey, so, um, I mean, so let's see, if you're a voice director, maybe you need to ask about the next session that's coming up. Maybe you're like, oh, what, these scripts, right? What do I need, what do I do with my scripts? Um, you know, is there where I should, should leave these, or if you shred them or something, because most places want to be secure and yeah, yeah, yeah. them securely. Things like that, that, all that stuff that like, let's just take care of this while people are here. Yeah. And while the people who have the answers are here and we can yeah. have the face-to-face instant thing as opposed to having to try and email people later Absolutely, or all that sort yeah. of stuff. And That's so that can, that can also be, um, you, you not, shouldn't be your responsibility, a lot of these things. But like, for example, who's going to get the audio and how and when? If you are a certain have a certain level of involvement with this project, that, that might be something you want to check on if you don't think it's necessarily a given, right? Most of the time it should be. But if you're in a situation where people are new at jobs, it it wouldn't hurt to say, hey, is everybody confident about, like, so when is, when is um, where this audio is going and how it's getting there? Do we know how we're delivering it? Mm-hmm. And you can judge by people's answers. They may just stare at you blankly. Yeah. Or they may say, oh, yeah, no, we got it. We're going we're gonna to put it up on a spare later today. It's going to such and such. Oh, cool. Great. So, great. But it, it doesn't hurt to check. If you do it nicely and it's not obviously because you think somebody's an idiot, it's just I just want to make sure that, that it all gets done because I care. You it's know? it's um, taking the same approach that you have with, like, overlapping – you know, uh, sibilances and, and things like that, except in you're carrying Give them it over a little more to, than what they need. Yeah. You're carrying yeah. it over to your logistics that surround the gig, which are, let's just prep and, and have like, leave a little thing of like, Oh, before you leave, let's just plant the, you know, let's figure out other stuff and just cover our bases. It's a lot of it is empathy and covering your bases like with people. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well said last uh, a couple of things, gratitude and acknowledgement. Um, whoever's left there, honestly, PAs, runners, janitorial staff, you name it. Like, yeah, man. Be grateful, be thankful, appreciate them. It's a, it's a tough business. And then mm-hmm. uh, I'll end one more time with the recommendation that, uh, as you can see, it's a lot of stuff. If at all possible, hire a professional voice director. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> well, they know all these things. <laughs> we we just spent uh, a full two hours uh, talking about this stuff and, and, ba- and had to rush through all of it. And it just shows like yeah. how deep this goes, you know, and... Like so deep, yeah. I will, I will acknowledge and, and express my gratitude toward you for doing this. And uh, seriously, you're you are a trooper, so and, happy uh, to do it. and to be able to <laughs> to distill everything in such a nice, beautiful way and just run through it. Like you're 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 the man, um, JSO, uh, Jeremy Scott Olson. So happy to be able to share. You're the man. Hope this reaches some eyes and ears. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, you're, absolutely. You're great at hosting this stuff. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, everybody who ever watches us. Appreciate yes. it. Thank you, Michael.